cooling fins. Main circuit board, laser module transformer, laser diode module, power supply from main circuit board to diode module. Laser diode controlling circuit board. Three laser diodes. Maximum combined output 200 watts. Lenses and prisms. Photodiode. Now let's take a closer look at an individual laser diode. The word for laser is an acronym for laser amplification by the stimulated emission of radiation. So what exactly does that mean? As you can see, the laser diode consists of two parts. These are called semiconductors. On top is gallium arsenide. It has been engineered to have holes in it that would like to have filled by an electron. This is known as the p-type semiconductor. On the bottom is gallium arsenide and selenium. It is a compound that has been engineered to have extra electrons that it would like to lose. This is known as an n-type semiconductor. Where both semiconductors meet is called the p-n junction. When a current is passed through the semiconductors, both the holes and electrons begin to flow towards the p-n junction. We will now zoom in closer to the PN junction to see what happens next. As the current continues to flow, the electrons and hole are forced to combine with each other at the center of the PN junction. However, for the electron to combine with the hole, it must lose a small bit of energy. It releases this excess energy as a single photon of light. This photon of light is trapped by the top and bottom surfaces of the PN junction as it is coated with a highly mirrored surface. As the photon bounces around within the PN junction, it encourages other holes and electrons to release a photon of light. This new photon of light will be the same phase, polarization and travel in the same direction as the original photon. These two photons then encourage more photons to be released. Eventually the whole PN junction will be filled with laser light. Now you can understand how the laser got its name. Light amplification by the stimulated emission of radiation. The color of the laser can be predetermined by the engineers at the manufacturing stage. Different colors can be achieved by simply using different materials in the semiconductors. The laser light can only escape the diode from a small slit at the front. The laser exits the diodes, passes through the collimating lens, which is used to focus the beam, and then is turned 90 degrees by a prism. The operator can control how much laser light he or she needs from the operating panel. Higher power requirements will make the other two laser diodes switch on. With all three laser diodes now functioning, we can see the full path of the laser light. All three beams converge here. At this point they encounter the final obstacle, another prism. This prism reflects only a small percentage of the laser light onto the photodiode.
The photodiode calculates how much power is being outputted by the laser diodes from the beam it receives. It can use this information to either increase or decrease the electric current of the laser diodes. After passing through the final prism, the laser light leaves the diode module through an optic fiber cable. The laser exits the diode module through an optic fiber cable. The beam stays within the cable due to total internal reflection. The light can then be used by the operator.